So Pep Guardiola has made more changes to his starting level this season than any other coach. Is this, not necessarily the main reason, but is this significant in the fact that City's performances have dropped off this season, Danny? I mean, ordinarily, you wouldn't highlight it because he, made, he was fourth highest in the list last season. So he's obviously a manager who likes to change things around. But reports have suggested that the players would like a more settled system. How much does it disturb players in general when things are moved around on a, a more than often basis? I, I've always believed that some, some stability and, and regularity helps performance in terms of partnerships and understandings of where people run, where they play and stuff like that. I also understand <clears throat> that when I was at Liverpool with Gerard Houllier and the squad got bigger and we got better, played in more, more games, more competitions, that the rotation was inevitable and needed to maintain the level of performance we wanted to achieve. So it's a balancing act. I think, I think the Pep Guardiola stat is not as relevant as the leak from the dressing room as to how that got out. Yeah. That would be more worrying for me because he has got a squad of wonderfully gifted players. Mm. So he can rotate more than the other Premier League managers to a degree. But the fact that that got out, that if it is true, is a worry. If it's true. The, the, the way I see it is the cornerstone of a successful team is that solid, regular team. You could... You could spine or team? Mainly spine. A te you, we can use the word team, but you could rattle off teams of the past that have been successful, couldn't you? Because they were nearly the same, the spine especially, but the, t the 11 players were regular. Yeah. Now, that does change, doesn't it, in certain areas. But my big issue with, with, with Man City in terms of their changes, they've been in real key areas that need stability and reliability the most, i.e. centre-backs. Mm. He's had a real problem, not, not, not due to tinkering, through injury mainly, mm. um, Left backs, you know, we've, there's been four or five different left backs. There's probably been one, two, three, four, five, six different centre back pairings this season so far. So it is difficult. It's, I think it's harder to put consistent runs of form together. It is when you're changing those key areas yeah. that often. Ha In having, front of you, there. <clears throat> it, it, having said that, though, sorry, Matt, to interrupt you. It was hard post match to be critical of Manchester City. Yeah, agree. Because they could have been home and hosed. They, were, they, they were, could have been home and hosed by half time. They played brilliantly. Yeah. And so, Performance is more important than results yes, in most so, managers' minds. So if, if they had won on Sunday, we wouldn't be talking about this, Correct. would we? No. The other thing as well, from just quickly, in terms of judging, you know, you're right about the injuries and the concerns because of, of what's happened. Last year, when they went on that amazing run to catch Liverpool and win the league, Company and Laporte played centre-halves and Fernandinho played in front. Best, holding midfield, best complete midfielder in the Premier League for, year, for the last five years. Now, they're not just missing Company and Laporte, Fernandinho, in all his wisdom, has dropped from Pep, has put yeah. him in at centre-half. Who's, who's still comfortable at centre-half, Fernandinho? He's, he's not as good, though. He's not as good, but also you good. lose what you add in midfield, protecting him, because he's more athletic than Rodri. So, so, double whammy. So three, double whammy. So, they, so but going back it's to... It's a triple the, whammy, because you you're, you're not getting the performances out of Fernandinho at centre-back, in my correct. opinion. Correct. So, so you might as well put Stones and Otamendi there. Yeah. So in, but in terms of the other thing, which you, you're right, they played well and should have won the game. But... For someone to come out and, and start saying, well, someone said this and someone said that, that's not happened before, really. We haven't read too much of that in Pep squad or, or Klopp. One of the things we'll talk about, mm. especially with Jurgen Klopp is, and Pep, is the ability to keep a group of superstars happy. Um, Maybe we should uh, treat that report with a little caution then. Maybe. I, 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 think, I think generally you're spot on with the nucleus of the team being... If you look at Liverpool... It's the same, the last two seasons, The only... The back five is more or less set in stone, other than whoever pairs Van Dijk. But that was because of Gomez's injury and Matip's injury. But, but the, the, other, the others you, stay the same. You don't have to be... Look at every team across the board. I, I look at Sheffield United, I look at Wolves, yeah. I look at these teams that are excelling for their, 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 their... They're above the level, probably, of where we picture them to be because they have that stability yeah. and you know their team every week. It's hard for the players in the squad in centre-back positions, in those type of positions, really difficult because you're not getting enough games. It will get changed on the peripheral, the wide players, the high-energy players, the attacking yeah, players, the yeah. tweaks, but those core positions stay the same. Well, what Klopp does is he, he, he basically only rotates the midfield all the time. Mm. So he's got six midfielders for three positions 
and they all know how to do the job, but they're high, in, they're, they're high energy, high yeah. intensity. The front three generally play. The back four picks itself. It's the same. And then you've got Henderson, Milner, Keita, Wijnaldum, Oxlade-Chamberlain, yeah. and I'm missing one, aren't I? Yeah. Whoever the other one is. Did you say F Fabinho? Fabinho. Fabinho. He's been injured. But, but just so six. But the back four and the front three are the same. If, if yeah. no one's injured... They play. They're the same. Yeah. OK, let's move on to James Madison. He's only 18 months into a five-year deal at Leicester City, but they're looking to reward him. And uh, he's apparently in talks over a new contract. Matt, if you were advising the player, would you tell him to sign? Of course he would, because he'd be on a cut. <laughs> yeah, if I was his agent. <laughs> I, the, the big question for me is, is, is signing a contract for, for, Matt, for James Madison, is it going to limit his possibilities of where he might want to go individually. Leicester's a brilliant club and I'm sure he's very happy. He's performing very well there. Yep. But if he would once got his eye on going somewhere else at some point, is signing an extended contract going to limit that at that club? I think that's a question that he'll want to ask himself. You've, you've obviously got all the, all the element of you're going to have a wage increase. And if, if, you don't ta if you turn that down, then you're going to lose that type of revenue up to the point of where you either sign a new deal or you move. Yep. All these things that will come into the play, will it make him happier? Will it make him feel more secure at the football club or valued? Um, I don't think it makes any difference to him in terms of his aspirations to go anywhere else, whether he signs it or not. Because as we've seen with football, if a, if a move is going to happen, it, it'll happen whether or not you're contracted. But I think it's hard, always hard to turn down a contract. I think if you get offered a good contract, it's tough to, tough to turn it down. Would you, if you were his advisor, would you want a release clause at a certain figure? That's if, of course, if the club will play ball. I think the release clause is the only... I agree with everything you said. I, I think it's, it's beneficial for Madison to sign the contract. I don't think Leicester needs to offer him a new contract. I think they'd be stupid to... What's he got left? Three years? He's got three, he's three and a half years. Three and a half. Wait years, till the though. summer. Yeah. Keep him motivated till the end of the season. See what... Because you're not going to... If Leicester sell him in the summer and he's got three years left, that price won't change if he had five years left. No. So keep him motivated till the end of the season. Make sure he keeps... He's a brilliant player, by the but, way. But does he ask you the question as to why they need to offer it to him at this moment in time? It does That's seem, what I'm saying. It does well, seem... I, I, I don't understand the, 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 the urgent need for it to happen. There is no urgent need. <clears throat> I mean, <clears throat> maybe, maybe it's a simple case of you've done brilliantly for us. Um, we want to tie you up, so let's get it done. Maybe yeah. we're not worried about, you know playing a game and that's fair enough look after your players that's what the best clubs do uh, but the 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 clause of an amount of money that the club prospective buyer would have to reach that's a very difficult one because that might be a stumbling block depending on how high it was set 